everyone. In this lesson, we're looking at theorems about roots of polynomial equations. And we have some review. Um, we have a polynomial here, the leading coefficient right here. N is our degree of the polynomial. And the very last term, if we're in standard form, is the a sub 0, which is our constant term. Standard form of a polynomial means the terms of the polynomial are in descending order by degree. And I have an example. So we went 3, 2, 1. And factored form of a polynomial means it's written as a product of its factors. And here's another example. The rational root theorem. If you're given a polynomial equation in standard form, we can find all the possible rational roots for that polynomial by taking the factors of the constant, the a sub 0, and dividing that by the factors of the leading coefficient, a sub n. Right? We're going to call the factors of the constant p and the factors of the leading coefficient q. So we have an example. What are the possible roots of this polynomial? So we want to look at all the factors of 6 divided by all the factors of 1. Well, all the factors of 6, that would be 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. They all multiply to give you 6 over the factors of 1. Well, that's just 1 and 1. And then if we divide 1 into each of these, we'll get plus or minus 1, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 3. So those are the possible rational roots of this polynomial. All right, so here we have some practice. We're going to find the possible rational roots of each of the following. So we want to look at the factors of the constant 8 divided by the factors of the leading coefficient 2. So factors of 8 include 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. And factors of 2, well, there's only 1 and 2. 1 times 2 gives me 2. There are no other combinations. So we have plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. So to simplify this, we're going to take 1 and divide it into each of these. And then we'll take 2 and divide it into each of these. So 1 into each of them is easy. That's just going to give me plus or minus 1, plus or minus 8, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. Then I get 2 divided into each one. So we've got plus or minus 2 into plus or minus 1. That That'll give me plus or minus a half. And the next one, plus or minus 2 into 8, that just gives me 4, and I've already taken care of that. Plus or minus 2 into plus or minus 2, that's just 1. I've already taken care of that. And plus or minus 2 into plus or minus 4, that gives me 2, and I've already taken care of that. So our final answer here for the possible rational roots of this polynomial is right here. All right, let's do another one. So we're going to take the factors of 10 divided by the factors of 5. And the factors of 10 would be 1 and 10 and 2 and 5. And the factors of 5 are just 1 and 5. So 1 divided into each of these is just going to give me plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 5, and plus or minus 10. Then I'm dividing 5 into 1, so I'm going to get plus or minus a fifth. And then 5 into 2, that's plus or minus 2 fifths. And then 5 into 5 is plus or minus 1, taken care of. And 5 into 10, that's plus or minus 2, so we took care of that. So our final solution of what we have here. All right, so the purpose all of all of this is let's say you don't have a calculator and now you have to factor, say, a cubic polynomial. Well, when we were factoring quadratics, we, we had a process for that. We could use the quadratic formula. We knew how to approach that. But with a cubic polynomial, we have to start somewhere. So this is giving us a place to start. This is giving us um, 
possible roots for that polynomial. So for the next part here, we're going to take it a step further. It says find the possible rational roots of each of the following, and then find one actual root using synthetic division. Reduce each polynomial until you have found all the roots. All right, so first we're going to find the possible rational roots. So we're going to do the factors of 3 divided by the factors of 1. So that's going to give us 1 and 3, and in the denominator, just 1. When we simplify that, we get plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. So those are the possible rational roots. Now we have to figure out which one of those actually works. So we're going to put 1 in the box for synthetic division. So we're going to test positive 1, and we're going to see if we get a remainder of 0. We're going to list all the coefficients. Bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Add them together. 2 times 1 is 2. Add them together. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. When we add those together, we get negative 4. So we know that positive 1 is not a root. So let's try negative 1. All right, this time when we complete synthetic division, we get a zero as a remainder. So what does that mean? That means that x equals negative 1 is a root. Okay, we have to find all the roots. We found 1. Now, because this is a cubic polynomial, because it's raised to the third power, I know that I'm going to have three roots. I found one that works. I've reduced the polynomial using these coefficients now. I started with the cubic polynomial, and now I'm going to go to a quadratic. So I'm going to be left with x squared plus 0x minus 3 equals 0. And now I'll just solve for x. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So x is equal to plus or minus root 3. So all of the roots then are negative 1 and plus or minus root 3. And hopefully you're starting to see how the um, rational root theorem can help us start to begin to factor something like a cubic polynomial. All right, let's try another one. First, we're going to find the factors of 1 over the factors of 2. The factors of 1 are just 1 and the factors of 2 are 1 and 2. So 1 divided by 1 is going to give me just 1. And then I have plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 2, so that would give me plus or minus a half. All right, now we're going to use synthetic division to see if we can find one of these roots that work. So we're going to go put 1 in the box, write our coefficients, and use synthetic division. And when we do that, we find that 1 is not a root. Now we'll try negative 1. Bring down the 2. Uh-oh, negative 1 is also not a root, so we have to keep going now. We're going to try 1 half. Okay, finally, 1 half is a root. So I know that x equals 1 half is a root. Now what we're left with is, is the reduced polynomial 2x squared plus 0x plus 2 equals 0. And we're going to solve for x. So we get 2x squared equals negative 2. Divide both sides by 2. We get x squared equals negative 1. Take the square root of both sides. And remember that the square root of negative 1 is i. So we get x equals plus or minus i. So all the roots for this polynomial are 1 half and plus or minus i. And that makes sense because we know we're dealing with a cubic polynomial and we are expecting to have three roots.
All right, the next thing we're going to be looking at is something called math conjugates. And a math conjugate is formed by changing the sign between two terms in a binomial. Irrational number pairs of the form a plus root b and a minus root b are conjugates. So if I have 5 plus root 2, the conjugate is 5 minus root 2. If I have root x minus 1 plus 3, the conjugate is going to be root x minus 1 minus 3. Now notice we didn't change the sign under the radical there. And the last example, I have root x minus root 5. The conjugate would be root x plus root 5. So that gives you an idea. So the irrational root theorem is really important. It tells us that if a plus root b is a root of a polynomial equation, then the conjugate is also a root. We know that it comes in pairs, always. Where there's one, there's the other. So if I have a plus root b, I have a minus root b. So for number one, we have a polynomial equation with the given roots, and we need to find two additional roots. So two additional roots would be the conjugate of both of those. So one minus root three and root 11. So this polynomial actually has four roots all together. For number two, we have two minus root seven and root five with our polynomial. So we know two additional roots will be two plus root seven and negative root five. So even if we were only told that we had these two roots, we would just have to know because of the irrational root theorem that these two roots also exist because irrational roots always come in pairs. The exact same thing is true with imaginary roots. Imaginary number pairs of the form a plus bi and a minus bi are conjugates. And here's some examples. We have 5 plus i, 5 minus i, 4i, negative 4i, and negative 5 plus i. Its conjugate would be negative 5 minus i. And just be mindful that we didn't change the negative in front of the 5. We just changed the sign between the two terms. So with the imaginary root theorem, if I have a plus bi, a minus bi is also going to be a root. So if we have a polynomial equation with these given roots, we need to find two additional roots. We're just going to write down what the conjugates are. So we have 3 plus i and minus 2i. So if 3 minus i is a root, 3 plus i is a root. If 2i is a root, minus 2i is a root. For the next one, if 3i is a root, I know that negative 3i is a root. And if negative 2 plus i is a root, I know that negative 2 minus i is a root. All right, now we're going to try something just a little bit harder. You can use the irrational root theorem and the imaginary root theorem to write a polynomial equation if you know some of the roots. And I just have a reminder up here because you're going to need to know this. Again, that i is root negative 1, and i squared then is negative 1. All right, so here we go. So it says, what other roots are included for a polynomial equation if you know it has roots i and negative 2i? Well, we know then we're going to have negative i, because negative i is the conjugate of i. And we're also going to have 2i, because 2i is the conjugate of negative 2i. And imaginary roots always come in pairs. Now the next part says write a polynomial equation in standard form with those roots. So that means if i is a root, that means I have a factor x minus i. If negative i is a root, that means I have a factor x minus negative i. If 2i is a root, then I know x minus 2i is a factor. And if negative 2i is a root, I know x minus negative 2i is a factor. All right, let's clean that up a little bit here. So that means we have x minus i, x plus i, x minus 2i, and x plus 2i. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply these two out using FOIL and these two out using FOIL. So let's do that next step. Well. To use FOIL here, first is x squared. Outer and inner, outer is plus 
i-ax, the inner is negative i-ax, so the middle terms go away. And then I have minus i times i, that's negative i squared. All right, starting to look a little better. Now for the next set, I have the first is x times x, that's x squared. The middle terms go away here as well. I hope you're starting to see a pattern. And then the last is going to be minus 2i times positive 2i. That's going to be negative 4i squared. Now, here's where it gets really good. Okay, you're going to like this. This i squared for both of these, if you notice, is right here. That's equal to negative 1. So wherever I have i squared, I can replace it now with negative 1. So we have y equals x squared minus a negative 1, and x squared minus 4 times negative 1. That's looking so much better. All right, then I have y equals x squared plus 1 and x squared plus 4. Now I just have to FOIL what's left. All right, so I have y equals... I have first x squared times x squared, that's x to the fourth. The outer plus the inner, so the outer is 4x squared, the inner is 1x squared, so 4x squared plus 1x squared, that gives me a middle term of 5x squared. And last, I have 1 times 4, and that gives me 4. So my final answer for number one is y equals x to the fourth plus 5x squared plus 4. All right, that was kind of a lot. Don't worry, we're going to do some more practice. This time we're going to be using irrational roots instead of imaginary roots. So it says, what other roots are included for the polynomial equation if you already know it has roots at negative 1 and negative root 5? Well, negative one's just a real number. It's not an irrational number. It's not an imaginary number. So nothing's going to pair with negative one. But negative root five is an irrational root, and we know that it pairs with root five. All right, so write a polynomial equation in standard form with those roots. So if negative one is a root, then we know that we have a factor x minus negative one. If negative root 5 is a root, then we have a factor x minus negative root 5. And if root 5 is a root, then we have a factor x minus root 5. So we have y equals x plus 1, x plus root 5, x minus root 5. And I'm going to FOIL these two on the end first because if you notice, the inner and the outer terms will go away when I FOIL those, and that'll make my life a lot easier. So I've got y equals x plus 1, and now I'm going to FOIL these two. So the first term is going to be x times x, that's x squared. The outer term is minus root 5x. The inner term is plus root 5x, so they go away. And then last is going to be plus root 5 times negative root 5, and that's just going to give me minus 5. Root 5 times root 5 is just 5, and a plus times a minus is negative, so I get minus 5. All right, that's not too bad. That's more what we're used to. So now we're just going to FOIL that. So we have first x squared times x. That gives me x cubed. Inner, 1 times x squared. That's plus x squared. Outer, that's negative 5 times x. That's minus 5x. And last is going to be 1 times negative 5, that's negative 5. All right, that's the answer to number 2. Last one here. What other roots are included for a polynomial equation 
if you already know it has roots 3 and 4i. Well, 3 is just a real number, so it doesn't pair with anything, so that one's taken care of. But 4i is an imaginary root, and imaginary roots come in pairs, so if 4i is a root, negative 4i is also a root. All right, so the factors then would be x minus 3, if 3 is a root, x minus 4i, because 4i is a root, and x minus negative 4i, because negative 4i is a root. So let me just clean that up. And I'm definitely going to multiply these two guys when I do FOIL first, because if you notice, the middle term will go away because we're going to have plus 4ix and minus 4ix, and that will make my life a little simpler. So we've got y equals x minus 3, and then we're going to FOIL the two on the end. The first term is x times x, that's x squared. The middle term would be the outer plus 4i x and the inner minus 4i x, so the middle term goes away. And then the last is going to be minus 4i times positive 4i, that's going to give me negative 16i squared. Now keep in mind i is equal to root negative 1 and i squared is equal to negative 1. Whenever we see i squared, we want to replace it with negative 1. So this is going to get replaced with negative 1. So that's y equals x minus 3 times x squared plus 16. And now we can just do the regular old FOIL. So we're going to do y equals first that's going to be this times this. That's going to give me x cubed. The inner, that's negative 3 times x squared, so that's negative 3x squared. Outer is going to be x times 16, so that's 16x. And then last is going to be negative 3 times 16, so that's negative 48. And that's it. All right, this is going to take quite a bit of practice. So if I were you and my head is spinning a little bit, I might watch this recording again, especially this last page. But don't worry, we're going to do a lot of practice. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day.